guys, um, you'll start to notice that on my channel, um, there's going to be merch. There's going to be, um, merch like me drinking out of a mug. On a mug. So I'm drinking out of a mug on a mug. Wow. But there's going to be a lot of merch that you can buy eventually when I get around to it, when I have time and stuff like that. And, you know, my wife is probably going to make a bunch of this. She actually made that cup. But I plan to make some merch also with, like, my frequency response measurement guide and stuff like that, you know. Um, for a while, I was extremely passionate about audio. And I spent years teaching myself a lot of things. So I started off just wanting a really good sounding microphone. And I ended up buying tons and tons of microphones that had tons of tonality problems. And over the course of like a decade of recording and making videos every day, I got really acquainted with the tonality the sound of every single microphone on the market. And then one day I decided I'm going to look at frequency responses because sitting around in audio communities was not helping me uh, find better audio equipment. A lot of those people don't know anything and they just wallow in filth on message boards and online communities. Uh, being brain dead losers, to be honest with you, who amount to nothing, absolutely nothing. And then one day I decided I'm going to start looking around. I'm going to look at spec sheets. I'm going to look at whatever I can. And I came across frequency responses, microphone sensitivity, and self noise, stuff like that. And I quickly realized after a decade of recording, that those tonalities that I memorized by ear were actually visible on the frequency response. So, you know, being able to use badly tuned audio equipment taught me how to hear different frequency regions because just about every microphone I owned screwed up a particular frequency region on the frequency response. So it trained my ears unknowingly how to hear the entire frequency response. I can hear if something is too thin, if something is too bassy. I can hear if there's a stabbing peak or a stabbing cut on the frequency response. If it sounds transparent, if it sounds lumpy. And I would say 99.999% of people cannot do what I can do because of that. So... Then I migrated over to, you know, microphones and, uh, you know, headphones and IEMs and all this stuff. Dynamic microphones, condenser microphones, earbuds, over-ear headphones, all this stuff. And I realized headphones have the same frequency response tonality problems. So I was able to migrate over what I learned about microphones onto headphones. And I was able to quickly, once I was able to find headphone and IEM in your monitor databases of frequency response measurements, I was able to quickly narrow in on how to properly tune audio equipment, microphones, headphones, and so on. And, you know, before I started all of this, you know, there's, there's people out there that, like, make these goofy ass frequency response guides like if you actually sit down and read some of this you're like what the hell bass shy bass shy like what the hell did, why are you putting bass shy what does that even mean disattached bass hollow bass plastic cubby like these are the losers these are the morons that were trying to do what I can do before I started studying this stuff. This is garbage. All of this is, is brain-dead, idiotic, underdeveloped garbage. You know? And I, you know, came up with my own stuff. And, um, you know, like this one. 
like this is my frequency response guide and you know I built it up from the ground you know through observational analysis through buying audio equipment through using my experience you know studying how companies were tuning their audio equipment you know noticing uh, patterns and, and what they're trying to do and the way people describe the audio and I was able to dissect the entire frequency response and give in my opinion proper descriptions and easily explain how to tune audio equipment and it took me a long time you know to do all of this and the experience involved most people will never be able to appreciate it. Most people will be tone deaf. Most people will just always be surface level. But I like the idea that I'm going to make merchandise that you can actually buy. And you can have it like sit on your desk. Like this Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. How many of you guys refuse to buy Bud Light these days? Because of the trans LGBTQIA+, because of the trans IGB, whatever you know, whatever you know, my dudes, my dudes. Yes, I'm a little bit drunk, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't taste that good, but whatever. Um, it's only. Bye.
multiple pairs of the things that you love instead of a variety of garbage. Just a wall of garbage. Like an enthusiast. When you're a professional, you know what you want. You know what you like. And you buy it. And you buy it. And you enjoy it. You don't just wallow about. <laughs>